Okay, so what we are working on today is we are just going to go through the process that I normally use whenever I am editing a rough sketch uh, that has been, you know, approved or just anything that I'm working on. Um, and we're going to take that, we're going to turn it into some decent looking, hopefully, uh, line work. Uh, at the moment, the, uh, the, the character we're going to be working on right now is a, um, is a spell casting sort of sorcerer. Um, and it is for the uh, Castles Encoding uh, children's book uh, that I've been contracted out to redesign a lot of their characters. Um, so right now what we've got is we've got just a uh, very recently approved uh, sketch. And now we're just going to take some of this uh, and we're going to not only modify uh, the anatomy and things like that to have it you know, make appropriate sense, uh, but we're also going to be uh, going in and adding in more details and things like that um, and give ourselves a, a much easier time uh, whenever it comes time to work on the line work. Um, so first thing we're going to do uh, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to come in here we're going to go ahead and we are going to rotate our canvas. Uh, we're going to flip it horizontally. Um, and what this does is this allows us to... Oh, no. Um, this allows us to... Uh, to adjust our, uh, our, our... Basically, the way we're looking at things, right? So... Right now, what we have is we just have our our character, and I believe this character's name is Pearl. Um, and what we're going to do is, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through, and I am going to first make some modifications that uh, to some of the issues that are pretty apparent to me. Uh, then we're going to go through, and we're going to um, make sure that we have uh, uh, enough visual interest to the silhouette. Uh, and then once we have that and those things, then we're going to start putting in more smaller details and things like that. And I may do that on stream, I may not. I'm not particularly sure. Uh, but we'll give it a shot and we'll basically we'll play it by ear and see where we go. So first thing we do is I'm going to keep the uh, this this railing on either side, these these simple straight lines. I'm going to go ahead and keep those for now. Um, they will not be a part of the uh, the piece once we're actually done. But for now, since I don't um, I don't really like working without some sort of anchor to keep me into what is uh, accurately uh, what what is what is accurate uh, as far as like posture and anchoring anchoring the the piece into something that resembles uh you know a, a default sort of plane uh so let's go ahead and first thing there's there's plenty of issues with this piece at the moment um we've got a lot of really rushed lines we've got a lot of really awkward looking poses and things like that like uh so for example we've got the neck here which has this series of scarves. And while I like the scarves and I like the posture, the neck is really high. And what we need to do is we need to figure out a way to reduce that, to sort of have things um, fit a little bit better. Now, there are plenty of ways to do that. Um, but the way that I'll probably start is I will probably, actually, what we're going to do you know what? Let's go ahead and do this. Let's play. Let's play another game, uh, and that game is going to be how can we screw with this this piece without actually drawing anything. All right. So first thing we're gonna do is, like I said, this neck is just way too long. Um, it probably made sense whenever I designed the character initially. Um, but at some point uh, during the costuming process, things got. Oh, jeez, what am I? What am 
my thinking. I didn't do the most important part, which is merge these layers, or merge this group into a single layer. All right, so now we'll, all we're going to do is we're just going to come in, and I'm going to go ahead and grab this selection of just the hood, the neck, and this amulet. And all we're going to do is, first thing, squash it a bit. Not too much, because we don't want the head to... Uh, we don't want to have a, a flat head, right? Like, that's not that's not at all what we want. Um, and now what we're going to do is we're going to take some of these things, like, uh, for example, this right here. Um, we're going to carefully carve out, because we don't want to lose all of the form. But we do want things to make a little more sense. So I'm liking this a lot better already. We've uh, we've enlarged the face a bit, um, which may be a good idea, may be a bad idea. We don't know. Um, we'll find out once we, we get things back out right. Like this is still a very early, very ugly, unfinished sketch. So we're going to... Uh, not really worry about uh, most of the detailing. Oh, good grief. Um, we're not going to worry about any of the detailing. We are just here to try and clean things up a bit. And you can tell that I just turned on my tablet because I'm doing all these things, trying to do these things, and I have completely wrong brushes uh, and wrong things preset because I spent all of today working on another piece um, just so we could do this piece together uh, very early on uh, for, for you know for better or worse but um, okay so we've made some minor modifications first thing we need to do is we need to just get everything looking kind of like it's supposed to be there right so that means we're gonna get rid of a lot of this overlapping stuff. Don't want that, but we can keep things as rough as we want for now. And that's going to be fine. Um, my stream health is not good. Let's, uh, let's maybe make sure that my audio is at least coming through okay. Yeah, no, that's fine. Alright, cool. Um, then I'm not too, too concerned about it. So, now that we've got um, now now that we've got this this head sort of sorted out, uh, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just zoom out. I want to flip the canvas again uh, because we were we were working close to this thing, so we want to make sure things are fine. And see, just uh, as for for pretty good reason, uh, we've got a couple of issues that I notice uh, that that are at least a couple of issues for me. Um, first thing is is these eyes and this nose are way too high up. It almost looks like it's, you know, part of the character's forehead, um, which is not what we want. So we're going to go ahead and fix that. While we're fixing that, while we're at it, actually, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to just map out and make sure that the skull is sitting relatively correctly. Yeah, so that's good. So now all we got to do is get the right freaking brushes uh, to start with. Just coming over here completely unprepared, absolutely unprofessional. Um, okay, so now we've got we've got that going. We've got it rolling. Everything's good. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Um. I really wish my stream health was a little bit better, but, uh, you know, there's only so much you can do. Okay, so... We're going to leave that as it is. We don't want to screw with it too much. Um, because, you know, that's that's kind of what we're going to be doing later. Uh, so for now, we're just going to leave that as is. 
We're gonna let things sort of be, and I'm already breaking my own rules, and I'm letting this thing, letting myself get distracted with like small nitpicky details. So another problem I have with this piece um, is she uh, she sort of goes pear shaped really quickly, like really really quickly. So what we want to do is I want to flip my canvas one more time um, while I'm actually looking at the problem area. And for this one, actually, this could be a relatively, uh, we're going we're gonna to try to make a, a quick fix and a potentially really easy fix uh, because lucky for us, the, um, uh, the hips of a person tend to flare outward, especially in the posture that I've given this character. So, allowing things like this to sort of flare out while also uh, using this to sort of build and help give the uh, give this belt a little bit more weight to itself, that's going to be a really good thing, I think. So, that looks good. Now what we want to do is we just want to cut in here just a little bit, right? Like, not too much, just a little bit. Kind of shave off some of the, some of this extra width that I have in there. Uh, I have this really bad habit, uh, this really bad personal habit of going into a piece, blocking things out, uh, and overestimating the width of things in general. Um, so a lot of my, a lot of the time, my pieces uh, start out very blocky and very chunky, uh, and then I uh, tend to have to go back and make some modifications and and basically trim the fat uh, from there. So this is what we're looking at right now. Um, I'm liking the direction. Excuse me. I'm liking the direction we're going. Um, but what I am concerned about is sort of the, the rest of her hips, right? Because she's got like this really nice flow to it, and I don't want her to lose that. But I also um, don't want it to be too oblonged and awkward, right? So this thing, um, let's go ahead and put on a, another layer so I can... Give a give a decent visual example to all of the literally no people who are watching right now. So the hips at the moment, there is a hip here, there is a hip here, right? That is a really really strong tilt to the uh, to the hip, right? Um, and that means that their core, where the hips meet, is going to be right about here-ish, assumedly. Right, um, which is fine, uh, except for the fact that their shoulders are not nearly as wide. Right, um, so this this goes back to that blown out kind of thing that I was talking about earlier. So I started out fairly fairly decent and narrow, and then I let things get wide way too quickly. Um, I, I I kind of let it get away from me. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna trim some of this down uh, and be as be as clever as we can with it. Uh, to try and try and get away with some uh, some some quick small edits uh, to help us move on. Uh, and again, this doesn't this doesn't need to to look necessarily all that visually interesting. Uh, the only thing it actually needs to do is it needs to serve as a marker for me for later. Uh, whenever we get into the actual line art phase, out of the sketch phase, um, to where I can remember what I'm thinking now and kind of keep the uh, the whole image alive in my head. Right? So, now that we've trimmed that down a little bit, actually, I want to trim that down a whole lot more. That's, we're just gonna, we're gonna go, we're gonna go nuts with this, right? And this could, this could result in uh, far too much of a dramatic swing. Or, or we could save the world. So, really, uh, there's, there's only one answer 
Um, and we're just going to keep flipping our canvas every couple of minutes, uh, just so we don't uh, we we don't we don't lose ourselves in uh, in this crazy modification game that we're playing right now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come over. I want to just cut right into that, drop it down a bit, right? This is actually going to help us build a little bit more perspective for the character. Um, because as it stands right now, we don't honestly actually, you know, now that I'm looking at that, that hip starts there and then it comes down. Yeah, and it should actually be probably about here is where it should be. So let's do that. Yeah. And you know, it's gross, it's ugly, it's not it's not what we want, uh, necessarily, but at the end of the day, uh, this is just the start. So, I would rather my, I, I would personally rather my piece look absolutely, like, disgusting up until the, the final few minutes, um, of, of the portrait, rather than it look absolutely beautiful and then just okay at the end, right? Like, that's not fun. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants to, to make just okay art, right? Like, nobody wants to build a just okay bridge. Uh, and, um, I, I am definitely not nobody. So we're, we're just going to go through and we're going to say that what I just said made sense. Because I'll be honest, I tend to lose track of what I'm saying on these live streams a lot. Especially whenever there's like, you know, nobody actively around. Uh, excuse me one second, I'm going to take a drink. But you never know. Um, it seems like these streams actually do get viewed every now and then. By other people. Uh, after uh, I'm done live streaming. Which is unfortunate, because I would, I would love it if uh, people would come in. Um, and you know, that, that would be great. Uh, hey, I can't help but notice that my basic info is wrong. Let's go ahead and update that real quick with sketch to line art process. There we go. And changes were saved. You know what that was? That was probably because... I changed this right before my internet went out, and then I didn't actually save the change. So, you know, we're not going to blame YouTube. We want to blame YouTube, but we're not going to. Alright, so right now we've got, we've got a pretty big difference from when we started, and we've honestly done very little. Um, which is great, because I'm lazy. So, let's swap it again. And, you know, honestly, I, I actually really like the form of this character now. Um, so let's, let's have a, uh, let's, let's flip back and forth, shall we, to boop. Original character, boop, modifications. And if you actually, if you look, uh, you can see how slight these modifications were and how big of a difference they made, you know? Uh, so that's just great, in my opinion. I, I love it whenever uh, just little touches bring things um, closer to what they need to be. Uh, mostly because that means you weren't far off to begin with, and that's that's actually very encouraging, you know, to you as a uh, as a as a creator. Or at least it's encouraging to me um, to be like, hey, I wasn't that far off, so that's that's good to know. All right, so we've done it. We've got our we've got our sketch friend here. She looks pretty good. Pearl's looking pretty solid. Um. Now, what we need to uh, what we need to do from here is actually the point of this whole live stream. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to take this and turn it into a finished piece of line art. And that um, that might work out. Maybe we're gonna we're gonna say right. Uh, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and say, yeah, it's totally going to work out, because um, I'm confident uh, on camera. So we're going we're, we're gonna to say that we're good, and I'm just going to go ahead and 
do the thing. Right. Move it on over. Drag it on in. So this character is based off of uh, off of a, a this is this character did did exist before I made them actually. Um, so we can talk a little bit about the uh, the mythos of uh, of castles encoding, uh, which is the book that this character comes from. Uh, Castles Encoding is a book designed for very young children um, to essentially help them get uh, get acquainted with what coding language looks like um, by basically presenting it in the form of a storybook. Uh, and I I joined the project. Um, only recently, only a few weeks ago. Um, but honestly, I have to say that uh, the, the people working on this, um, Michael Palmer and uh, the rest of his team, uh, are some really, really good people, you know? And they, they're, they're, really, they're really passionate about um, what's going on. Oh, so there was someone here. Oh, and then we, sorry, we just went to zero people watching. Um, so that's cool. But yeah, they're they're a really passionate group of uh, of individuals. So, uh, so this this character Pearl, um, is the sorcerer of their sort of uh of their small party. Um, I believe it's four or five people overall. Uh, in total, it's uh, kind of hard for me to to uh, to remember, and I don't have the book in front of me right now, obviously. Um, but she is sort of their, their sorcerer, kind of like a, a tech wizard almost. Uh, but for the purpose of the, the book that we're currently working on, uh, or the purpose of the book that this illustration is going to be used for, um, the, the, this character is just a normal wizard instead of a super cool tech wizard. Um, because we are working on... A, a new project for with the uh, with the castles encoding team to basically not only revamp all of their characters uh, in uh, a sort of a, a less watercolor storybook style uh, art style, but we're we're also going to be uh, featuring this art in a completely new book, and I am personally very excited, really jazzed to be a part of it. Um, to be able to design these characters for these people who believe so strongly in what they're doing, um, and you know, helping kids is helping kids is cool, right? That's uh, that's what the youths are into these days. Is uh, helping helping small children. It fucking I don't know. Um, all right, so again, this is this is. In a lot of ways, this is kind of a boring uh, process because effectively what I'm doing is tracing um, at the worst of times. But at the best of times, what I'm actually doing is uh, is I'm modifying my original lines to uh, to give us something very similar to what was there initially, but pushed just a little bit farther and a little bit more unique. Right, so for example, with these, uh, with with this sort of scarf thing that she's rocking, right? Um, I could come in and add in some uh, some interesting detailing along each of these wraps. But what I'm uh, why I'm not going to do that is because this this character is meant to be viewed as a full body character and what we what we don't want to do is we don't want to nitpick and focus on such a small uh, area with that much detail right um, imagine sort of uh, uh, imagine that you've got a uh, uh, a character right that's uh, that's a stick figure okay and now what would be better? Would it be better to take that stick figure and just have them 
uh, take that stick figure and have them uh, with a extremely well rendered and an extremely like uh, very very realistic style face and then just a stick body or would it be better to focus and spread that detailing and time out uh, over the entire piece uh, and more importantly would it be would it modify the piece beyond a point to where you actually wanted it to be um, these characters uh, are not overly detailed and they're not all they're also not meant to be overly realistic looking um, this is this is actually the third character I've done in this series. Uh, the first two being um, Marvin the Paladin, uh, who there is a speed paint on my YouTube channel of, uh, and I want to say it's Ada. Yes, Ada Grace, uh, which also has a I believe she is the first speed paint on this channel. Um, because that was right around the time I started my Patreon. And I got inspired to, uh, start designing, or start doing a little bit of video editing. Uh, get a little more bang for my buck with all the illustrations that I was doing. So, again, this is, uh, to, to sort of go back to the whole point of what we're doing right now. This is, this is literally just taking in the character art refining things. Uh, so this character's, this eye looked bad, didn't, wasn't good, wasn't a good eye. Not a good eye at all. It's a bad eye. But now, taking in smaller, yeah, means it matches a little bit better. Boom, there we go. We've got some, some very mild expression going on uh, with the eyes, or with the eyebrows, anyway. I'm uh I, I tend to leave the majority of my detailing to uh to my painting phase which well my mostly my rendering phase actually my painting phase has very little modifications to it um okay good that's that's looking pretty good We've got a lot of the face visible. Um, yeah, we'll say that's we'll say that's solid for now. Um, I feel like hmm. No, actually, we see. Look, this is why we flip our canvas. Um, because we flip the canvas, we can see that actually this looks awful, and uh, we should all never speak of this again. Um, but no, really. It's just that the face is just tilted just a little bit too much. It's not. It's not a bad thing. Uh, it's. It's not going to end the uh, the picture. Um, but what it is going to do, it is, is it is going to make me make some really early modifications to help improve things. So basically, all we're doing is we're just reducing some of the tilt that I had because I do tend to go a little bit too extreme. Uh, with some of my angling in my earlier sketches, uh, so yeah, that looks that looks much better. That's much more acceptable, much more uh, much more fitting of some proper line work. All right, so let's try and uh, let's try and sneak in a little bit of detail because this pendant here um, is it, it it's otherwise just a circle, right? So circles are fine, circles are good, but if we went and tried to uh, tried to push things right, try to give this character a little bit more theming. Um, with this character being a sorcerer, I really feel that all of the little trinkets that are visible on on their person should kind of have a cool story or do something neat. Right? So we're just gonna make something really simple. You know, doesn't doesn't have to be extremely fancy, doesn't have to change the world, but it should be interesting, in my opinion. So now 
this is where we're going to actually start getting into a little bit more of the detailing um, because now we're going to be working with cloth and I personally really enjoy working with cloth because I love how cloth handles, uh, how, how, how it tends to drape off of the body and I love wrinkles so uh, actually a lot of times I do have to go back whenever I'm rendering and paint out a lot of my line work wrinkles because I tend to go a little bit too bananas with it and while it's good to uh, to be passionate and to want your uh, your thing to be hyper detailed and hyper rendered sometimes that's just not what the piece needs you know um, there's a there's actually this really interesting I hesitate to call it a trick sort of a kind of like a philosophy I guess with um, you know what method method is the right word uh, this really interesting method where essentially what you do is the lack of detail uh, in certain areas leaves the uh, leaves the eye to sort of assume what's really there uh, and it makes uh, in, in a lot of in a lot of ways it actually makes for a more interesting piece a more believable piece at that because your uh, your viewer is the one who's actually making uh, making making the detail in their own mind and so while you might uh, oh space oh hi Drew um, fortunately your YouTube picture is uh, is your face otherwise I would not have known um, but yeah so fuck what was I talking about right I was talking about uh, the lack of detail in certain areas and why it's important um, it's it's just a really good way to sort of let the human eye prioritize what it what it needs to right because like there's really no point in focusing uh, in, in hyper rendering like a belt buckle if it's a a belt buckle that can barely be seen or B, if it's one of like 37 belt buckles, because I guarantee you the what a what a viewer is gonna uh, actually see whenever they look at your piece isn't gonna be that one hyper rendered belt buckle. Uh, what they're going to see is the 37 belt buckles, and that's what they're going to take away from it. So really, it's it's all about picking uh, picking your battles and knowing what you should focus on what you shouldn't focus on um, and a lot of that uh, a lot of what you should focus on tends to um, center around the middle of a character um, and not like the middle like the stomach but the middle like right down the center so like the face um, actually yeah the stomach the torso uh, and the the belt region uh, those are a lot of those are specific sections of a silhouette that tend to stand out uh, quite a bit and because of that yeah that looks good um, and because of that we can uh, we we can focus our effort and focus our energy uh, on those locations to to, to build more detail and to give the impression that there's much more detail in a piece than maybe there actually is. Uh, one second, I'm going to take one more drink. Because mm. Mother knows I can't live stream unless I'm absolutely hammered. Um, so yeah, now this is, this is just back to a little bit more detail. Uh, I haven't decided whether or not this area right here is actually going to be flesh. It probably won't be because the majority of the character is actually covered, and that would probably just be a little too distracting. Um, so I don't think we're gonna. I don't think we're gonna do that. We'll probably end up doing something 
uh, something tricky later uh, later in the process um, probably once we're we're in the painting phase okay now another important thing to keep in mind just in general whenever designing characters is what this character does um, not only right in the minute like what they what they do like this character is a sorcerer right so magic character we're gonna have a lot of little trinkets a lot of little baubles but more importantly like what they do and what they've done um, so for example there are plenty of different sorcerers out in in creation right in the in in mythoses in the way the, this world uh, in, in Jesus was the word um, in fantasy there we go so uh, just saying that you have like oh I have a mage okay well that's that's absolutely fine and that's good that's an excellent starting point um, but in my opinion things don't get really interesting uh, until you start tearing back that uh, that that sort of simplistic identity and putting in a little bit more love and care into it right because like um mages are mages are really different uh you know like you've got um like merlin was a mage uh but then you've also got people like harry potter right so you have all this different kind of magic and all this this different kind of like really interesting depth that all these uh all these much more uh skilled and determined people have gone through great lengths to flesh out uh for you to to use um, in your own writing or in your own character design. So for me, I've always been much more of a fan of the practical mage, right? Um, not the big, crazy, fireball-slinging mage. Those guys are cool. I love those guys. Um, but give me the mage who absolutely has a spell uh, to, make, uh, to make themselves tea, timed, prepped, ready to go every day, you know? Uh, give me, give me the mage who spent their time focusing on not only spell books, but like uh, specific sub dialects, right? Like the nerdiest mage possible. Give that to me, and that's my favorite thing. Um, at least whenever spellcasters come through. And fortunately, this character here uh, is, is is a part of a book that is meant to educate. So, I would say that it's pretty safe to assume that she is going to be a relatively uh, nerdy and intellectual sort of character. Um, which means that I, I, I kind of associate like the, the practical mages, like the practical magic, with um, preparedness so i i usually tend to think that like you know mages like merlin they're super cool they walk around with a you know with their their super cool gandalf robes and their big wizard staff and then you got mages like this that are like essentially hermits that just carry their house on their back right so they just have all these cool little trinkets all these unique little things and i love those little details uh, now, obviously, we're not going to get too crazy with the details for this, but that does, uh, especially in illustration, give you an opportunity to really define who a character is just by their outfit. Take another drink. Oh, man, talking is hard. So... Uh, so yeah, defining a character by their outfit. Um, oops, probably put the mic back in the right place. Uh, but yeah, so defining a character by their outfit is uh, something that I personally really enjoy. Uh, I really feel like a character becomes much more believable whenever you can look at them and sort of understand who they are uh, without a line of dialogue, without a handy dandy little text box or a description or anything like that but just by looking at them and just just looking at what they're doing or what they have on them not even what they're doing 
uh, and moving from there, I feel like you can really get uh, you, you that that really makes a great character. Like that makes an excellent character design wise, right? Like your character could still be awful and you know a Mary Sue, but if their their costuming is on point, right? Like if their garb is good, well then who cares, you know? Um, <laughs> but also not really. No, please don't do that. Uh, right, so... Just gonna catch up on this thing, because I tend to, I tend to go, uh, almost like paint by the numbers whenever I'm doing, whenever I'm, uh, I'm, I'm doing my, my finished line work, right? So, for example, here, I, I, I'm going basically from the head down, uh, just to... Uh, just to sort of give myself markers that I want to hit, right? So, like, I did the stomach, so now I want to finish up the arms. Um, but before I do that, we're going to zoom out. We're going to get rid of things. Going to look at stuff. Flip our image. I'm still really not a fan of that head. We're going to have to do some more editing on that head when we're done here, I think. Because that that face is it's just I don't know I think it's I think it's just off center maybe it's maybe just a tilted just a little bit too much, um, or I could just be nitpicking. Because I have been known to do that. I am a nitpicker. That is kind of my shtick. Is that am I doing this right? Yeah, I'm doing this right. It was a really bad habit of starting a pattern somewhere. And then completely forgetting how I did it uh, on one material, and then doing something completely different. Uh, fortunately, we didn't do that here. So cheers all around. Um, also, I'm really hoping the audio is better on this one. I know we had some audio troubles uh, last time I did a live stream. So if if this is like garbled or awful or doesn't make sense, please somebody say something so that I can either a shut up or b fix it. Um, Okay, cool. So let's get back to. Yay! It sounds good. Um, thank you, Drew. Uh, so let's get back to talking about uh, this outfit and kind of what I see for this character. So for me, a big thing that I really wanted to push with this character is layers. I love layers. I love clothes. I love cloth. So the more layers, uh, the better, as long as things can stay practical. Um, so one of the one of the things I kind of wanted to try and push for. Uh, or try and try and push myself to do uh, with this particular character design is I wanted to have loose cloth and then do a lot of this banding kind of like we have right here um, like you can see in these uh, specific areas but an important thing to remember is actually you know what no I kinda like the asymmetry uh, the asymmetry of that yeah We'll, we'll leave that. Uh, we have this this much higher up near the shoulder, and this is actually towards the midpoint of the arm. Yeah, we're gonna leave that actually, because um, I'll be I'll be drawing these characters multiple times in multiple different positions. So that'll actually that asymmetry will be really interesting um, whenever put in the book. So now we're just going to come through, and this is one of my big kind of like hard. Uh, uh, shortcomings, I want to say. This is something that it's very hard for me to figure out, and I'm never sure if I do it right. So, you can already tell I haven't done it right. <laughs> um, but basically what I want to do is I'm just going through, and I want to have this sleeve hang open, right? So if this sleeve is hanging open, how does it look? How do we make it look right? If it doesn't look right, what does look right? And this is the quandary and the struggle that I face every day. Is that I just can't draw loose fitting cloth because as much as I love the folds, because I do love the folds, I I don't know how to how to make the swoopy at the end. You know, that these these little swoopies. Like how do you how do you do that? 
but we're gonna we're gonna try it. We're we're gonna keep we're gonna keep on keeping on, and just really hope this works. Because if it doesn't, you know, I'll probably cry. Uh, I'm a pretty big crier. I don't really like how this is. I feel like some of these things should taper off a little bit sooner. There we go. That, that looks a little bit better. And then we'll just leave this to be just kind of open and flowy. Yeah, I like that. And then we'll leave it like that. Okay. That looks... Oh, looks like it might be okay. It might be acceptable. We'll see here in a little bit uh, once we get back. So now, anyway, the reason I wanted to have the open and flowy thing is because if you notice up here, uh, on a little further up the arm, is I have the sleeves kind of going up to this character's hand uh, and basically just stopping like right at their fingers. And I really, really like the aesthetic of that. Which means uh, that I naturally had to plot the entire freaking character design around these really cool sleeves. Because, you know, honestly, I'm a practical man, and that's, that's what I do. Um, Alright, so hand. We're not going to worry too much about the hand. We're going to keep things really simple. Because um, actually, this thing that kind of looks like a piece of paper here, uh, I'm going to make it actually a tome, or not a not a tome, uh, a spell effect. So later on, it's going to be very glowy and fancy looking, and actually draw the eye. But right now, it just kind of looks like she's looking at a memo or something, uh, which is totally acceptable. She's an adult, I believe, technically. Assuming. We're going to go ahead and say. And then even in fantasy world, you know, adults got to read papers or something. Fuck it. I don't know. Man, I've been doing this thing for 50 minutes. Tired. Just talking. Ugh. All right. Uh, yeah, let's see. Let's see where we're at. Because actually, I'm really liking, really liking this detail. So sort of, this is where we're at right now. Um, and boop. That's where we started. Boop, where we're at, and boop. Yeah, it looks good. I like it. Image, flip, flip horizontal. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We'll 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 call it good. We'll call it spicy. All right. So <clears throat> now we've got. Uh, now now we're gonna move past the stomach, past the arms, and everything like that. We're gonna move to the waist. Um, and what I want to do probably for this, after I take a drink, is I'm going to start a new layer, and then we're going to start tackling this thing, because if you notice, there's a lot of things that overlap here, and one of the last things I want to, uh, I want to do is, uh, start overlapping something and trying something completely different than what I have statted out here, hate it, and then have to redesign the entire stomach or something like that, so, I'm going to take a drink. Excellent. Liquid has been consumed. I can continue to speak. Assuming I can put the mic in the right position. You know, like an adult. Okay. So, new layer. Boop. We've already flipped our layers, or already flipped our canvas. We don't want to do it again. Too soon. Much too soon. Um, so, belts. Belts are cool. Belts are great. I personally love belts. Um, I kind of fell in love with belts and sort of like the traveler aesthetic. Um, whenever I started playing Pathfinder, like right whenever it came out. Because um, if, if you've seen the Pathfinder art, first of all, it's beautiful. Um, but it's a bigger, uh, a, a much less, like, traditional Western style than, say, 3.5's art. Uh, path, uh, 
Dungeons Dragons 3.5's art. There's a lot of, like, really bright colors and a lot of really extreme, like, fantasy-esque um, armor and, like, things that honestly would really be impractical, but they just look cool. And and one of the things that, I, in my opinion, I've found practical uh, whenever I've used these, this, these sort of things as cons- costuming inspiration is cover yourself in pouches because most fantasy clothes don't have pockets. So just get a bunch of pouches and you're good to go, right? Um, so I'm kind of stalling because I don't know what I want to do with this belt because I don't want it to be just a slab, right? Because that's boring. Um, and you know what? We've got this cloth aesthetic and this uh, this character's um, African-American, so I've, I've tried to bring in more... Uh, honestly, more cultural elements than I don't normally use. Um, so let's try... You know what? Let's try adding in paneling and and see where it goes. So what we're going to do is we're just going to etch it kind of like this. Just going to let it etch itself little by little. Okay, and then skip a little bit. Etch a little more. Okay, just do a few. It's important to keep the angle right, though. Yeah. And then we will do right here, because it's about where it'd be. Cool. And now what we can do is put in just a little bit of detailing. Nothing too fancy or too crazy. Just some real simple stuff, right? And so what this did, um, uh, what this has inadvertently done is it's made this belt look much thicker than um, I had initially intended. But uh, I actually don't really mind it. Um, and I think what I'm going to do, probably what I'll do is I'll... Uh, actually, you know what, let's try it now. Let's try it now. So... We've got this belt right here, and we've got these these cool little metal decals. Um, but what I want to add to that is I've gone ahead and I made a new layer because I don't know if this is going to stick, and this is just going to go right over everything I just designed. <laughs> so last thing you want to do is is design something, want to modify it, and then uh, find out that it was in fact not the thing you wanted. Mm, nah, I don't like it. Nope. Let's not even bother erasing. Let's just delete it. Doot, deleted. Sweet. Um, <clears throat> right, so now we've got that. Uh, now I want to... I think I'm going to focus on this bag uh, before I focus on the belt that it's actually looped around um, because I feel like I kind of have this uh, this inkling that in working on the detailing on this bag that it's actually going to inform me how I really want to uh, to detail the belt it's attached to. Just putting in little details um, and honestly this is probably gonna this is probably gonna wind up biting me in the ass um, because if anyone has seen the character designs I did for uh, Marvin and Ada, who are the other two characters um, of this uh, of this this children's story um, they aren't necessarily as detailed as uh, as I'm making uh, Pearl here um, but you know honestly I think I can fudge it I think I can make it work um, I think I can uh, can weasel my way through. So, all right, now we've got things. Uh, we, we've got things rolling with uh, with this pouch, or at least with the straps that lead to the pouch, right? Um, next thing I want to do is, oops, is I want to uh, bring our handy dandy belt, the initial belt that we had further down, just so I don't forget about it. 
Uh, right. So we've got the side view, the side plane of the pouch. Uh, and pouches are another another thing I really, really enjoy working on. Uh, honestly, I think I think it's cloth and leather are are two of my most favorite uh, materials just to like draw and and to paint. Um, just because they're they're so pliable, you know. Um, but also, you can have like such a host of different textures. Uh, whenever it comes to actually rendering them, that even if you uh, even if you do have, you know, uh, a character that's mostly covered in cloth or mostly covered in leather, uh, they're gonna wind up looking very uh they can they can wind up looking infinitely different and each piece of that uh that leather and that cloth can look very very different uh despite being technically the same material and i personally i just love that i think it's great i think it's it's a beautiful way to um beautiful way to bring in some depth for the character is by giving them some really cool, fancy clothing. Speaking of depth, I think I want to try making. Uh, I'm really, I'm really pushing it with the sort of uh, banding aesthetic that has been in pretty much everything um, that's made of leather. Uh, or every every strap at least um, on this character, and I you know honestly I could end up hating it, or I could end up loving it. Knowing me, I'll probably hate it, um, and then lament my foolishness and my loss, uh, and then completely change it before I actually send it uh, off to the uh, the the rest of this this creative team. All right, cool. So how does how is that looking? That's looking it's looking pretty good. I don't know if I'm sold on the uh, on the paneling on that belt though. I think it might be just a bit too uh, uh, a bit too heavy, given the rest of the character. But you know what? That's fine. We'll um we'll keep working on it. Um. So now I've got this belt and I've got I've got this pouch that's hanging off of this belt. And I need to figure out what I want to do specifically with this belt. And normally, uh you know, a professional artist would have things like references up. And um I don't. So <laughs> let's uh you know what? I'm just going to I'm going to Google I'm gonna go to Pinterest real quick. We're just gonna look up some some imagery while I while I continue to stall for time and chat. Um, so yeah, mages, magic, it's cool. I dig it. Um, but okay, that's neat. That's neat. No, don't want that. So um, yeah, let's actually. You know what? Yeah, let's talk about drawing from reference because that's. That's something that's that's kind of a like an oddly contentious issue uh, for artists, because uh, some people think it's cheating or something. Uh, and I I personally I've yet to meet an artist that has the not not only the the visual library but the mental capacity to call on that visual library to the extent that. Um, they don't need a uh, they 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 don't need a reference, right? Like you can you can remember uh, you you can look at whatever you want to look at, right? Like you can you can stare at something till the cows come home. Um, but at the end of the day, if you're just uh, if you're just pulling at it from memory, it's going to be different. It's going to be weird. It's going to be incorrect in some way and that might be it might be a good way uh you know it could very easily be beneficial for you to do that um but at the same time it could wind up um 
being something that's not anatomically correct or something that doesn't quite make sense, even though you kind of make sense in your own head. So now that we're done stalling for time, um, talking about visual libraries, uh, I think I know what I want to do. I think I actually want to add um, a pouch around about here, but it's not going to be a normal pouch. We're going we're gonna to try and do an extra fancy pouch since this character's already got some really fun details on her. I kind of want to push it a little bit more. So we've made a new layer, right? Layer 24 here, because I don't lay, I don't, I don't name my layers because I'm a rebel. And uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to zoom out because this is going to go like on the front of the character. And let's just sketch something out. And I kind of want it to start narrow, kind of like that, and then kind of balloon out. Because for some reason, like the aesthetic of pouches that can sort of like bloat and, uh, and make an interesting shape while they're like filled with stuff is just... It's it's just absolutely my favorite thing. Okay, yeah, so let's do that. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to keep in mind that this character is slightly turned. So instead of a out, an outward curving line, we're going to do an inward curving line there. And then here, we're actually going to modify where that goes. Give it just a little bit more of an inward curving line. Right, right. All right, that looks good. That's a that's an excellent basic shape to start from. Um, now, let's go ahead and try and think about like, all right, this is a mage pouch, and this this could very easily become uh, one of the key features for this character. Right, this is right in the center, uh, right in the big line of sight. This is gonna this could be a very eye catching thing. So what we want to do is we want to a make sure that it fits the aesthetic that we've already established, and b is uh, not overly simplistic without being, uh, at the same time, overly complicated. So, uh, one of the things that I've really, uh, that I personally really enjoy um, with pouches that I've seen recently is that a lot of pouches have these sort of like these buckles and multiple flaps that kind of... Uh, that, that are there to hold things like scrolls or wands or parchments. And I find that really awesome. Uh, and what I tend to do whenever I'm working on a specific detail of a thing that I don't exactly know how it's going to look yet, uh, I tend to go off to the side and, uh, and do it. Um, just, uh, it, you know, just keep it on the same canvas, but you don't want to uh, you don't want to make uh, uh, try and try and go in too early and completely lose the original design you were going for, right? Um, and not get something you're pleased with. So paper is is actually something I don't get to draw all that much. Oop, that's ugly. <laughs> um, there we go. Now we're just sort of roughing it up. Uh, now we're going to come over here and we're going to use some of these fancy Photoshop tools. Uh, we're going to go to Edit, go to Transform, we're going to go to Warp. Now what Warp does is it gives us this cool little grid and it allows us to kind of bend our lines, alter the anchors of things. There we go. Cool, I like that. Yeah, that looks good. Let's go ahead and flip the image, make sure that I still like it whenever it's facing the other way. Yeah, totally love it. Awesome. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take it, boom. And we're going to make a couple copies. Control J, Control J. Sweep. Go back down to here. Hmm, what? Oh, is it, is it not working? Did I? Oh, you know what? Ah, my keyboard's not turned on. Ah, the struggles of working with uh, with with these fancy wireless machines. Control J, Control J. There we go. Now we're gonna we've got two, and we can screw around with. Um, 
Oh, you know what? Actually, let's go ahead and just grab one of the ones that's on a different layer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take it, and I'm checking out uh, one of my references. I kind of like it about here, and let's kind of make it a little bit bigger. Squash it a bit, though. There we go, and then keep it lined up. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that looks good. Apply. Okay, and then we're gonna come up and we're gonna take this this one. Come over, make it smaller. Alright, we're gonna put that about right there. Okay, and then back to this original piece. Alright, and now uh, how do I want how do I want to represent these things kind of being together right like how do we want how do we want it to do because we could do it a couple ways I could have buckles going over it I could have flaps hmm um, but you know honestly what I think I want to do first and foremost before I get too carried away is I want to come over and I want to design what the actual flaps look like, right? So we're back on our original layer for this pouch. Um, so these scrolls are in... Those, those rough scroll sketches are in no danger of getting uh, too messed up. While well, we're over here trying to address just what the heck is going on. So you know what? Actually, I like this. This looks good keep this as is right it's simple it's clean let's do that and then go in and let's go ahead and line this up the side right cuz this is this is actually the side of the uh, of the bag we, we we need to make sure we make that clear um, with the way our lines are oriented. Just kind of what I'm doing right about now. Just going through. There we go. Sweet. That'll work. Really rough. Really not the prettiest thing. But it'll do. Um, so we've got that. We've got those. Now, you know what? I think what I want to do... Actually, I know exactly what I want to do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to this scroll. I'm going to put some bands on it, like so. Right? Come over here. Add those bands, straps, doo doo. Oh no! Yeah, that'll do. Doot, 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 and. There we go. Excellent. And now that we've decided that this scroll is going to be over the bag, we can just do that. Boom. And that solidifies the scroll's perspective. However, uh, what I've also decided is that I want this scroll to be behind it. Kind of like so. That gives us some fun depth, but in order to, uh, to help make sure it's kind of understood that it's being strapped down, I'm just going to add the hint. Just a little detail. Not a lot, because it actually would be masked, right? But, you know, just a, just a hint. There we go. 
Beautiful. All right. Now all we're going to do is we're going to take all of these layers, merge them together to sort of help our little cleanup operation. I'm going to keep this scroll on the side because I feel like I'm probably going to add some more scrolls. Um, and I am so lazy. So, all right, let's, uh, let's make one more design on here. Why not? Screw it. All right, let's treat ourselves. Like this is this is gonna be a big fancy looking bag. Might as well make a real big fancy looking bag. All right, cool. And you know what? I uh, another one of my favorite things is I love weathered items. Like I love things uh, that look like they've been through hell. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean they're decrepit, but it just means, like, it, it looks like they've been used, you know? And I definitely want that feeling for this bag, because not only is this bag a big eye-catcher, it's right in the front, uh, of this character. So that means that it takes, you know, sunlight, it takes all of the, the the physical activity it takes you know any sort of interactions that the actual character would take this bag also takes and so that means weathered bag to indicate a weathered traveler oh thank you Lucas saying my things look sharp that's so nice all right, so uh, let's go ahead and pull it back because it's been a minute since we've actually pulled it back, and this could, you know, look hideous uh, for all we know because we've been too engrossed. Um, looks pretty good. Doesn't really look like a bag though, and that's that's a bit of a problem, but it's a problem that's easily fixed. Um, we're gonna go ahead and flip our canvas, and uh, yeah, it looks all right, but it, like I said, doesn't look like a bag. So how can we fix that? you ask, I assume. Uh, well, it's real simple. All we've got to do is we've got to work on our lines here. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to whew, we're going to blow out this bag right here. Or we're going to blow out this line to sort of help push that things are going just a little bit farther. Right. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add this line. Uh, these, well, this hint of a line, anyway. Right, we're not going to worry about making things too fancy. We're not going to worry about uh, things looking too finished because this is it's far too early on for that, you know um, All we're really worried about is making sure that this looks like a like an appropriate three-dimensional bag, right? And that means that I Am gonna you know what we're just gonna go we're gonna go all out on this. We're just gonna erase everything find our point, want things to center, and just go from there. Sometimes you gotta start fresh, you know, you can't be, uh, one of the, one of the biggest and most important lessons I learned uh, early on working in, uh, wor working as a digital artist is that you can't be afraid to get rid of your mistakes. You can't be afraid to get rid of something you like uh, just because you like it. Uh, if it's if it's good for the piece, great. But if it's bad for the piece, you got to get it out of there. You got to move forward and make something even better. And sometimes that means destroying something that was good to make something great. In this instance. Doing great, <laughs> but you know what? That's all right. 
Um, I think I'm starting to identify some of the problems. Um, I got a little, I got a little too hung up on the original shape language of this bag, where it was kind of, it, it kind of tapered in. And while that is cool, while that is good, it's not necessarily the most, uh, the most accurate thing. Now, we're going to use another tool, well, same tool, actually, uh, which is the warp tool, uh, to help give the proper curve perspective of this bag. Uh, all right, let's do that. What we're going to do is we're just going to bloat it out a bit, drag it out over a little bit more, tilt it, bump it up. Boom. Solid. All right, kids. Yeah, that looks much more, much more bag-like. It's not like a full thick pouch like this big one over here. Um, it's, it's a little more fancy. It's, you know, it's got some more, uh, some some more class to it, some more character. You know, which wasn't initially what I was going for, but uh honestly I think it I, I think it's turning out uh it turned out more interesting this way. You know? So we're gonna leave it that way, I think. We will absolutely leave it where we're at for now. Um, we're just going to add in a few more details, just some, some things to help give it uh, some visual interest, you know. Nothing too, nothing too wild. Some, maybe a little triangle or two, help break up the shape language. Yeah, that'll do. Alright, I'm just going to keep it real simple. I'm not going to get too, too hung up on things. Um, yeah, cool. That's good. Okay, cool. So that absolutely did, uh, uh, didn't help inform me as to what I wanted to do, or what I actually want to do with this belt. Um, for those of you who just joined, was actually the whole reason we started uh, working on the new bag because I was very indecisive and a fool. But hey, you know what? We got something neat out of it, so I'm going to count it. Let's point to me. Because I'm the best. Best at what? Not entirely positive, but you know what? At uh, semantics. Doesn't matter. I'm the best at something. Bow. Bow. Beautiful. Bingo bongo. We're counting it. Oh, man. Look up and there's like four whole people? Wow. Totally should uh, start my streams and then not talk for the first hour and a half. Save my voice for the, uh, for the end whenever people actually show up. Hello. Welcome. We are uh, currently designing a character for a storybook. Well, we're redesigning a character for a storybook. And uh, we're having, you know, varied levels of success as we, as we explore um, what, uh, what we actually want involved in this character design. Ooh, that's ugly. Yeah, my tablet has this weird issue where every now and then I'll make a stroke with my pen and it will ignore pen pressure and just give me like this full ugly bulky line which is uh, absolutely not a thing that we want or have ever wanted there we go yeah see this is why this is why I don't go directly in from um, from from doing a rough sketch to actually start uh, doing a painting 
is because of issues like this, um, actually right here, because if you'll see, if we follow the line of this sort of like uh, pseudo corset that this character is wearing, it actually angled really sharply upward, which was just not correct. Um, and I guarantee you, if I would have tried to paint that, I would not have noticed it until way too late. Yeah, it's beautiful. I really like that. Um, but we do need... We do need to add some... some something... to this belt. So, I think we're just going to add some holes. Just some big... honestly, kind of cartoony holes. Just to help uh, break up this white space, because I really... one of my... Uh, one of my least favorite things whenever I'm designing a, a more detailed character like this, is I really hate just, like, big, ugly white space. Because, and not because it's it's necessarily, like, it defaults to not looking good, but mostly because, like, I worked really hard in other areas, and then the big blank spots, those are the ones that are drawing the most attention. And that's bullcrap. So, if that means I have to give everything equal time then I'll do that, because I'm friggin' fickle, my dudes. I want to be appreciated for the beautiful princess that I am, master of the art community. <laughs> Fucking Jesus. Uh, Alright, so I'd said before that I kept that floating scroll around for a reason, and this was it, actually. I just really wanted to uh, to have a few more scrolls on this character to, to push the fact that, you know, they read books and shit. Granted, none of these are books. Actually, ooh, we're not going to have any books on this character. Um, I'm about that life, fam. I am definitely about that life. Yeah, this actually adds a really good depth uh, depth of field to this default, uh, to, to the sort of side of this right here, because if you see, this is behind, the scrolls are behind the, uh, the bodice thing. I don't know what it's called. I just drew it. <laughs> um, but it's behind that, but in front of the arm, so I'm actually going to go back and, uh, erase some of this, uh, some of the sleeve work. There we go. Cool, let's do that, and then... Oh, there's that issue we were talking about. And we're just gonna go in, we're just gonna have these... kind of strap right there. We're gonna show the tongue... the actual thing. Whoop. Beautiful. Let's go back to the original layer. Boom, boom, boom. All right, let's uh, let's take a gander at what we're looking at here so far. Let's ditch that man. That is that is a whole lot of. Ooh, I might have overdid it on the belt, boys. Might have fucked it up a bit. Um, all right, image rotation, flip horizontal. Nah, nah, screw it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. We love it. Uh, 10 out of 10, best uh, best character design. But I am seeing an issue. Uh, where is that? All right, cool. That's like right here. So uh, we're just gonna move a piece of this uh, this corset in a bit um because it seems like it just it's jutting out just a bit too much for my liking. There we go. Just a you know just a hint. Not not like a whole lot. It's not a major issue. Honestly, it might even go unnoticed. Um but I absolutely will notice it and it will drive me crazy. And I'll spend 3 years crying in a closet because of how ugly that one tiny corner looked that one time. So now we're just going through and we're just making sure that things kind of kind of line up 
in this waste before we uh, we we crack on to the actual uh, the one of the final parts of this line work because we've actually this was the this is the the area that was going to take us the most time which is this belt this waste which frankly I'm in love with I really do like that wow I need to I had I had draw more spellcasters my dudes this is oof this is a good time all right so let's go ahead and now that we're done with the belt we're going to open up one more layer, one final layer, um, even though this is a bit too many layers for my own liking. Um, I usually I usually actually keep my line work in like three different layers, upper body, torso, uh, and then lower body. Um, just because, you know, you wanna you you might want to resize things a little more easily. Um, but this time I, I went a little crazy with the <laughs> with the belt, so now it's got a few extra layers on there, and that's okay, you know. Who, uh, who is is anyone to tell me that I use too many layers? I'm more responsible artist, probably, but you know, that's you know, psh, whatever. All right, I am just I'm doing just fine over here, eating you know my peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And uh, splurging for for chicken at the Safeway every now and then. So, who's the uh, who's the real sucker? Exactly. So, um, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm kind of running out of uh, running out of shit to talk about. So, if anybody has any questions, um, even if it's it's not a thing you actually don't know and you just want to humor me. Um, I would love a new subject to talk about. Uh, it can be art related, preferably art related. Yeah, let's keep it art related. Um, don't go, don't go asking me any weird stuff unless that weird stuff is art related. In which case, let's do it. Let's go. I am here for you, fam. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. I like that. That's pretty spicy. Uh, ta -ta. Uh, a lot of this, uh, a lot of the modifications or the alterations that I'm doing right now is uh, really it's just me kind of playing, playing with ideas in my head and just sort of I, I don't have a, uh, I don't necessarily have a plan. Um, more of I, I have that theme for you know the super bookish mage character, um, and then the rest. Uh, the the rest is just me sort of trying to elaborate on that as we go along. Uh, right, that doesn't look right at all. That looks more right. We'll do that. And erase a little bit. And erase a little bit. Cool. Image. Rotation. Flip. Horizontal. How much feedback do you get from storybook authors? Uh, on your character design. Um, so, so far, uh, I've, they've actually been pretty hands-off, um, which is is almost disappointing to me, um, because I was really excited to work with a, uh, you know, with a, with a pre-existing group, because these people have done, uh, done work before. Um, actually, the first piece I did for them, which was the piece that I did to, uh, to try and get the job, um, was a monk character named, uh, Addie Grace. Add a grace, one of the two, um, and the the only actual feedback I got once I had finished the design, uh, other than that looks good, uh, was that they didn't like that her stomach was showing, because um, you know it's for small kids and stuff. So uh, so that's that's one of the things that I have to go back on. But um, yeah, I really uh, not a lot. They don't they don't give me a lot of feedback. They're uh, they're either really really content. To uh, to let me do my own thing, um, and they really because they they really liked my art style, uh, which is cool. It's very flattering. I'm I'm super super flattered to have a a group of uh, a, a group of people, you know, actually think that the the way I design things is is good. So that 
Does that make sense? That doesn't make sense. We're not gonna... We're not gonna do this straight line. That's a bit of a cop-out. Actually, you know what? No, it's not a cop-out. It's that my my head is letting me make this thing way too complicated. Garage, see, that looks so different. God. God. Oh, God, you sound so different. Oh, okay. I don't know who that is, but it's probably because I've been talking for an hour and a half. And I'm very, very weary and tired. But, you know, what? we're going to finish this friggin' line work. And, um... And, and, you know, what? who gives a shit that my, my Patreon reward only said that I'd stream for an hour, and I've literally never streamed for just an hour. It's always been, you know, at least two hours. Because uh, I, I, I apparently just work in two-hour spurts. Um, or at least I, have, I hit a, a checkpoint every two hours or so. Um, faster artists could probably do this shit in an hour, but, you know, whatever. Screw them. Okay? I, uh, I'm not a fast artist. Well, I, I don't know. I, I think I'm fast. You know what? No, it's not that I'm fast. It's that I'm, uh, 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 I'm, I'm really diligent. I do a lot of work every day. Um, at the moment, uh, since art is my, my only, uh, source of income, or reliable source of income anyway, um, my, uh, my uh my my work day is probably about ten hours. Uh ten hours long. Which you know, I mean ten hours in your room in front of uh like three computer screens. Um complaining to yourself that this was, you know, what you wanted to do with your life, you fucking idiot. Uh it's really not that bad, honestly. Uh there are definitely worse jobs out there. And this is honestly, I wouldn't trade it for anything to get sentimental for a second. Really, like I was honestly, I was a little worried whenever I uh, efficient. <laughs> yes, very efficient, Drew. Um, honestly, I was a little worried whenever I got laid off from Microsoft, uh, or from my old job uh, a few weeks ago. I was I was worried because I've I've wanted to do this for so long that. Um, that I thought maybe I I didn't actually like want the reality of it, you know. Uh, I but fortunately that wasn't the case. Um, all right, so we're I'm fumbling with that little bit right there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip the canvas. Dunk. Um, um, nope. Nope, doesn't look good. Does not look good at all. So, how can we make this look good? A few ways. A way that I'm probably going to do right now, uh, which is a little bit more sneaky editing. Let's just do that, and then just do that. Cool, and then edit. Transform. This this might not work. This might look awful. And I might hate it, but we'll see once we get there. Uh, you know, actually, that doesn't look uh, too bad at all. Uh, any other questions, comments, concerns? I really hope you don't have any concerns. There's not not a whole lot I can do about them. At least not concerns about my art. Uh, unless it's that I am I am too good art and that is concerning you. I hmm that just just does that just doesn't look right. How can we make that make sense? You know what? Let's get rid of the sides here, right? Let's get rid of you know what? No. Screw it. We're getting rid of the whole thing. Throwing it out. Because I got a new plan. <laughs> and this is, this is going a little bit, maybe a little bit too much off book for, uh, this This might actually, Drew, get me, uh... Uh, wave out, turning at the bottom. Um, 
I thought about doing something like that, but actually, uh, what I want, I'm trying to avoid too much motion in these, um, because they're, they're really just meant to express to you how the character looks, and I think, honestly, I think one of my, alright, so, looking at the, looking at the way the character is, is statted out right now, now this is that we're breaking down into mumble territory because I'm trying to figure out where I went wrong and how I fucked this up because I fucked it up somewhere. Um, okay, cool. So let's do big brush, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna block some stuff out uh, and see if we could uh, s see if with these these fun little blocks fix what's wrong. So we've got that, we've got that, and it just kind of flumps out here, right? Because this, this hip is lower. This hip is higher. That means that it should be about right there. It's where I had it initially. Hmm. Mm hmm. You know, I think I might have the feet in the wrong areas, and it might be screwing me up a bit. I think that might be it. Hmm. Interesting. Could work. Uh, yeah, let's give it a shot. Okay, so let's, let's try and imagine that the foot is actually over here. So it's a little bit of a wider stance. Alright, and then we go up. Go over. Boom, boom. Do we really want to flip it like this? Eh, I don't think we do. Yeah. The same. Maybe the feet turn uh, turned outwards more. Mm. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to here, boost up the original layer, and yeah, it looks like what what happened was is I just threw these feet on here very irresponsibly. Probably somewhere kind of let's look. Yeah, a little bit more like that. Let's go to the edit tool. Or go to the transform tool. Go to the warp option. Doink. Doink. Doink doink doink. Doink. Yeah, that needs to be turned outward. So what we're gonna do now is gonna go to edit, transform, flip horizontal. Nope. Edit, <laughs> transform, flip horizontal again. Back over here, hit OK. Let it be, yeah, about right there. That seems right. Um, probably what happened was is, is early on in this uh, <coughs> early on in this thing, we got uh, we we did a lot of quick editing to sort of reduce this character's hip size. Because it was blue, it paired way too far out, and probably what happened is, is I absolutely just didn't bother to think about the feet, and I was just focused on the fa uh, on the shape language. Yeah, you can actually tell uh, a lot of the issues. Oh, too big. Okay, cool. So that helps a little bit, but what I really think I should do is do 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 do. Actually, gonna leave that one alone. You're going to shift it over just slightly. There we go. 
There we go. Yeah, this will work, I'm thinking. This should do it. Because we just, all we really want to do is we want to just make sure that we get rid of that blowout curve. Because you've got the hips, they're starting way up here, and they're, the, they're, the, the legs themselves are flaying outwards, but, or splaying outwards, not flaying. That'd be a little creepy. All right, now then image, rotation, flip horizontal. Still not that much of a fan. I think it's the foot. I think it's mostly just this foot needs to needs to just come over a bit. Probably about there. And we'll take this one. It to about here. And this one needs to be up and back a bit. Actually, this needs to be bit smaller. There we go. Okay. Let's try to hit this dress once more. What is this? Oh. What's that doing? I don't need to be there. Alright, let's do it. So, let's actually start with the hemming this time. We're just going to rough this out. And up. Over. Really what it comes down to is making sure Yeah, that seems a little bit more correct. Good. Just reduce this one just a little bit more. Oh, right. Yeah, thank you, Drew. I was not looking. Uh, yes, this is a character design, a uh, character redesign um, for the Castles and Coding uh, children's book um, for their second volume. Uh, I've been contracted to basically redo, redo their characters, help design uh, a lot of their new characters for the story. And, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's essentially it. Honestly, it's really, really straightforward work, but I'm, uh, I've been really enjoying it. Feels, feels good to work. Um, let's ditch that for a second. And, whoop, grab that, angle it out. Like so. Good. That's not where the foot's going to go, but that's where the cloth is going to go. Because, screw it. Yeah, alright. It ain't pretty, but it's accurate. Let's see. So now what we're doing is we're just going to come in. And uh, I have this really bad habit of keeping my feet uh, super simple, uh, even in shoes. Um, it's something that I have to actively fight against. Uh, to make sure that I put in any sort of real detail in a shoe. Not entirely sure why, because I like drawing uh, 
just bare feet with toes and everything like that, but the moment you're like, draw this shoe, I break down instantly. All right, there we go. Just gonna keep these real simple because I'm honestly I'm not even worried about it. The actual design for these shoes is extremely inconsequential because they are going to get covered up here shortly. All right, cool. So let's look at where we're at right now. Um, I say we're looking pretty good. Uh, I don't like how rough this uh, this looks, but instead of going in and doing a uh, a brand new layer over it, uh, instead what we're going to do is I'm just going to come in here with my brush. We're just going to start carving things away. Make sure I swap over to a hard edge eraser. And we're just going to be very careful with how we're uh with what we're getting rid of. And obviously we are gonna go back and replace some of these things. Because it does look a little harsh and awkward. Um the missing brush strokes. Keep it simple. That sort of arc over. And up. Simple. Uh, another important, just sort of side note about um, about draping cloth. One of the things you really want to avoid. Is you really want to. God damn it really want to avoid um, solid lines in a drape, right? So like if, if this just went straight up and it was a solid line, you really want to avoid that because um, it just kind of loses way too much depth, you know? And it's not necessarily, uh, it's, it's not really what you want. Uh, whenever you have cloth draped like this, because otherwise, if you if you just have these these really easy uh, these these really simple straight lines up and down uh, with no variation or uh, any sort of uh, gaps, is it just makes everything look two dimensional, and that's that's the opposite of what we're trying to do as illustrators um, or as character designers. Uh, we wanna we wanna make this two dimensional space that we're working in appear as a three D plane. I almost feel like it would have just been quicker to just draw draw over these things again. I was trying to save time, but uh, I think I might have wasted more. Eh, what can you do? All right, we're just gonna come in here. Create a few simple stress lines right there, or pinch lines, not stress lines. Uh, good. Get rid of this. Add in a fresh one. And another. All right. Okay. Um. Let's get rid of that background real quick and. Image, rotation, flip horizontal, show me the monster I have made. Not bad. Not bad. Um, we're actually doing pretty good. But I do think this needs to come in a bit. The angle can stay, but I think it needs to come in a bit. Oh, did I do that? freaking thing I do. No, I didn't. Oops. Too much. Just so happens there's an error there. Alright, cool. Um so now all we're gonna do is we're just gonna come through some of these uh some of these locations. Uh like right here. And we're just gonna do a few touch ups. 
Um, but we're basically done at this point. Or at least done with this uh, this part, obviously. Um, yeah, just going through without that underline layer uh, to make sure that everything kind of maps out as we wanted it. All right. Yeah, cool. Um, so it's been like two hours of talking and working on this. So yeah, that's about two hours um, to go from... Here, let's actually... Let's do a side to side. Um, do, do, do. Assuming I can, yeah, there we go. Gonna let me move you. Cool. That, and then you can come over here. Uh, yeah. So two hours from our rough sketch here. Now well, this lovely quick rough sketch. Uh, probably about twenty minutes worth of work before it got sent off in an email. Uh, and then, boom, over to these refined lines. Um, yeah. I'd say, I'd say that's pretty good time, especially for the amount of, uh, the amount of detail and shenanigans we got into on the belt. Um, so yeah, good, good, good time all around, good, uh, good amount of, uh, good value in the, uh, in the time spent, uh, for the detailing. So, um... I think we're going to go ahead and call the stream here. Um, thank you all for listening to me chat. Uh, if you would like to see me do more of these, um, please make sure you check out the uh, Farachi Does Art Patreon page uh, or over on Tumblr. Uh, I do live streams twice a month, uh, but I am currently only $40 away uh, from my monthly Patreon goal of doing them uh, four times a month, which means a stream a week. So have a have a great night people I'm gonna go and chug some water cause like holy shit um but yeah see you guys in probably about a week or so for my next live stream <laughs>